So EB, for months we've been reporting about town residential having, you know, there's been rumblings of non-payments, there's been rumbling of, rumblings of not being able to pay their bills and agents walking out. But then on Thursday, everything came to a head. Uh, that was a wild, wild day of reporting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. So um, town residential is one of the cities, was one of the city's biggest firms mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. Andrew Heiberger started it in 2010. It was really flashy from the start. Andrew started City Habitats and sold it to Realogy. And then a few years later, when his non-compete expired, he started hiring top agents. Mm -hmm. And his move from the get-go was to create a luxury brand, hire like the best agents, mm -hmm. big names, and just really focus on the luxury business. And they had the branding, the marketing, the parties, the whole allure of having, hey, we're a Manhattan shop, and we run things in this sort of flashy, uh, way, but but they they may, they had results. I mean, within within three or four years, they were among the biggest firms in in, in Manhattan. Yeah, within a few years, they had ten offices, more than six hundred agents. Mm -hmm. Everyone knew them. And what's interesting is now everyone talks about Compass going in and recruiting agents, but Town was really the first firm to do that, mm -hmm. to go to its competitors and hire the biggest names and just spend lavishly. And some might say excessively, but mm -hmm. really roll out the red carpet have concierge service for agents, yeah. cars. Glossy and photo shoots everything. and all that stuff. And I remember, I mean, on the on the real estate holiday party circuit, I think their party was always the one that people were waiting for. It's just oh, that yeah. kind of brand. So what went wrong? Um, you know, you can, you can go back a few years, you can go back a few months. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically where town got into trouble was a few years ago, mm -hmm. Andrew Heiberger got into an, a dispute with his primary backer, Joe Sitt. Mm -hmm. Joe They're, Sitt, the retail mogul. Exactly. Um, Joe Sitt is a, was a backer of town mm -hmm. and um, ultimately decided he didn't want to renew Andrew's contract as CEO. There were, there were a series of lawsuits back and forth. They traded lawsuits um, with one alleging, oh, you wanted more and more money every year. The other alleging, you know, you're, you're failing to live up to your commitment as mm -hmm. an investor. Mm -hmm. It got really, really ugly. Mm -hmm. Um, this is around 2014, right. 2015. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, Andrew was no longer the CEO for mm -hmm. several months. And that was really a turning point for the company where they had this very big, public, ugly dispute that was that it was there for everyone to see. And mm -hmm. that couldn't have instilled a lot of confidence in agents. And Heiberger, he took a sabbatical for a little while. And in that, in that time, there was a there's a guy, Jeff Appel, who was essentially president of the company. They announced a lot of initiatives that never panned out. They talked about having an office in London and growing their international business. So some of that didn't really pan out. And then there was the triumphant return of Heiberger as CEO. And then things were had seemed to stabilize for a little while. But in 2016, uh, Wendy Maitland, uh, talk a little bit about Wendy and what happened with that dispute, because I think Around then is when agents are like, wait, this, this might not be the most stable place to be. Mm -hmm. I want to go back actually mm -hmm. to things seem to stabilize mm -hmm. because they did stabilize for a while, for maybe a year, more than a year. Mm -hmm. um, during that time, town was kind of on a steady course. Um, it was kind of a new day after Joe Sit. Andrew was right-sizing, getting things in control. Mm -hmm. Town signed an affiliation agreement with a firm in Miami. You can argue, is that valuable, is it not? At the end of the day, it was a positive moment, sure. left agents feeling positive. Mm -hmm. Then in 2016, um, Wendy Maitland, who had been the director of sales, filed a lawsuit alleging that Andrew Heiberger and Joe Sitt were bleeding town dry. Mm -hmm. And back again, we, we roll the clock back two years mm -hmm. and suddenly drama. Very public. Very public, mm -hmm. very ugly. Mm -hmm. And this time allegations that the company doesn't have enough money and its investor, its primary investor is is not helping it stay afloat. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later, Joe Sitt was bought out by Andrew. Andrew said, hey, hey, I have sole control of the company now with the backing of some unnamed high net worth investors. Did, such, did, did the situation stabilize then? Not immediately. Mm -hmm. So after Wendy Maitland sued, there were as several months of fighting. And ultimately, you know, over the course of those several months, Town lost several of its big names. Mm -hmm. Wendy Maitland went to Brown Harris Stevens. Itzy Gray, who was head of leasing, left. There were a lot. There was there was an exodus. Mm -hmm. um, Both know, on management and in terms of on agents. management right. and in terms of agents. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at this time, you can't say it's only because of the drama at town, mm -hmm. right? You know, at the same time, Compass hit the scene, aging recruitment in general in the industry mm -hmm. has gotten really competitive and that coincided with the drama mm -hmm. that was going on internally at town. Mm -hmm. But 
the combination of those two factors is too much. Was not good. And the competition also brings about higher commission splits for the agents, right? So the the firm is not only dealing with competitors, they're also dealing with taking in less money for themselves while running, you know, operating costs in Manhattan don't don't get cheaper, they only go one way. Right. I mean, if you put aside the very specific um, issues related to how town was being run and you look at sort of the macro forces in the industry um, you know you have pressure to pay more to pay higher commissions to agents who could go to another firm if they can get a better offer um, expenses aren't going down sure. and um, on this past Saturday actually um, Andrew posted a um, a message on his LinkedIn basically mm -hmm. saying that high commissions and competition from discount brokerages were a factor right. in his decision to. And then there's Street Easy, there's lead generation, there's so many other forces that are making brokerage a pretty tough business to be in. Mm -hmm. Let's take it back to now to last week. We start hearing that you know town is going under mm -hmm. and then what did you find? Right, so for months um, agents anonymously and with their names were calling and kind of saying I'm not getting paid or my commission is late and you know that's a really serious allegation mm -hmm. so it's something that we we were keeping in mind and just kind of you know asking around and seeing how is this going to play out and then on Thursday my phone was off the hook. I just couldn't stop making calls yeah. I was looking up everyone calling managers, ex-brokers, people in the industry yeah. Yeah, yes. but, it, but it seemed to it seemed to say hey town is one one source told me the brokerage portion is shutting down or the brokerage portion is no more um, so you went out there, you went to Astor Place, which is one of their bigger offices. Right. What well, did you see? So throughout the day I was getting phone calls and text messages saying something's happening at town. Mm -hmm. The agents are being told that the business is closing down mm -hmm. within two days. Mm -hmm. As the afternoon wore on, it just the calls intensified and I was having high level sources say that agents from town were coming into their offices mm -hmm. looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're obviously very thrilled about this. this oh, is they're, like, yeah. yeah this is Look, you know, I, I don't want to say that they're all like cheering. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a sadness, but you know, of course, top agents are coming into their office looking for jobs. Right. So, um, but you know, it seemed everyone sort of agreed that around four o'clock mm -hmm. there had been some announcement in the company. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I got a call saying, hey, agents are clearing out of Astor Place. So I headed down to Astor Place mm -hmm. and talked to a few um, agents who were taking their stuff out in bags, mm -hmm. in boxes, um, going outside to smoke, people who don't smoke, who are totally stressed, uh -huh. um, managers who were worried about their agents, mm -hmm. agents who were worried about what was happening to their listings, their mm -hmm. commissions, some agents who, I, I talked to one agent who was at an open house when she got an email from a colleague saying, town's done, mm -hmm. like didn't even hear it, Her like she, she didn't get the official notice until right. She was, you know, out on an open house, which is probably it's just mind-boggling. So then we, when we, when we get confirmation that this is happening, then we get a statement from mm -hmm. town. However, the way it's phrased, it sounds like the company's not going away, just that the sort of the lifeblood of the company, the the brokerage division, is going away. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so that's the interesting question. Mm -hmm. It's been four days since town pivoted away from resales and leasing. Does that mean that town is? the business, the entire business is closing down, mm -hmm. we're not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. Will they stay focused on new development? Right now they probably have six condo projects, seven leasing projects mm -hmm. that are active. Um, but it's it's a huge question mark. New development is hurting right now. Right. Um, if also, you're a I developer, mean, why, would, why stay right. with town? It's mm -hmm. There's a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So what are the immediate things you're looking at now? One is obviously the exodus of talent where they're going to end up and we're obviously making some headway on figuring that out. Right. Uh, the other thing that you were looking at was the commissions, right? right. Um, so Town had proposed something where, hey, other brokerages, you can have our listings for a fee. Right. So the background is, remember, when, when a seller signs an exclusive with an agent, they're actually signing an agreement with the brokerage, right. not the agent. Mm -hmm. So technically, Town has to release the exclusives mm -hmm. to the new firm if the agent moves. Mm -hmm. And Town said it would do that, mm -hmm. but it's asking for a 25% referral fee from the new company. Right. It's unclear how much leverage Town has, if that can be negotiated, what, how will that will play out. Mm -hmm. But the main question now is what happens to the listings? What happens to the unpaid commission? Does town continue as a business? Mm -hmm. Does it file for bankruptcy? If so, do the agents become creditors? I mean, there's a lot of unknown right. when it comes to active listings right now. Mm -hmm. 
And then, so there's been, you know, businesses that have not worked out before or businesses that have blown up and then gone under. Why is there such intense interest in town beyond what we've seen? I mean, this whole weekend has been a crazy, <laughs> just calls and emails. And if you look at the comments all over social mm -hmm. media, what is it about town that makes it such a point of interest? I think it's a few different factors. First of all, this is one of the top 10 biggest firms in the city, mm -hmm. right? So this is not a small player. It's not, you know, a kind of, you know, it's not a small flimsy organization. It was very big. Mm -hmm. And at one point it wasn't, it, it was one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's also, you know, it wasn't a quiet company. Andrew Heiberger is a very bold CEO and founder. Um, he's not shy about his vision. And when he started town, he came in with big ideas right. and he's always been very vocal and outspoken and open about mm -hmm. his plan. Mm -hmm. I think the benefit of that is that, um, you know, it, 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 te it educates other, I mean, you can introduce yourself to the industry, right. but the, de the problem is if something doesn't work out, everyone has seen you, everyone knows what's happening. Right, and he changed the industry in many ways, right? Some of the more aggressive campaigns to be out there, positioning real estate as more of a lifestyle brand than, than just buying and selling property. I think he was a pioneer in, in, that, in that space uh, for many people, and a lot of brokerages took that lead, but I guess when you have someone of that stature that, that falls, People love to know about that and talk about that. Yeah, and I think, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, he and Town have both been involved in several lawsuits mm -hmm. and several juicy lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So people know and, um, you know, people want more. Mm -hmm. Safe to say that your reporting isn't done? Not done. All right, thank you. You're welcome.